Hey guys, this is going to be your consumer math lesson covering unit 10.10, uh, uh, starting on page 309 through page 311. We're going to be looking at certificates of deposits and savings bonds. Okay, so again, we continuing with banking and the different types of services that are offered through different um, types of, through different types of services that are offered through banks. Sorry about that. Um, we're gonna be, we've already looked at savings account, right? So that's just a basic account where you deposit money. That money, you know, stays in there as long as you want where you can withdraw money from that savings account whenever you want. If you keep a, a higher balance in that savings account, then you're going to actually end up earning a little bit more interest because you're maintaining a higher daily balance or a higher, higher yearly balance depending upon how your interest is calculated, right? So looking at our last lesson, right, depending upon whether or not you have compound interest versus just a straight interest rate. Um, so the, just those are signed, kind of some of the ways that you can earn money on a savings account. Well, a certificate of deposit and savings bonds are other ways that you can actually earn money on money that you deposit to the bank because, again, the way that the banks work, right, we, we kind of talked about this, is that when you deposit money into the bank, the bank then actually uses that money as equity that they can then loan money out to other people. So when you get loans from a bank, the, the reason that you're able to actually get those loans is because of other people who have put their money in the bank and are keeping that money there, then the bank is able to make money off of that interest, then they can turn around and loan those funds out which allows the, you know, the banking industry to thrive. And so certificates of deposits or CDs, okay, that's what certificate of deposit stand is, CD stands for, stands for certificate of deposit. And savings bonds are other ways that you can actually earn money by keeping your money in the bank. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be covering on Unit 1010. Let's take a look. Certificates of deposits and saving bo savings bonds. Certificates of deposit, or CDs, are another form of investment that can be used to increase your savings. CDs pay a higher rate of interest than a savings account, <clears throat> but at least a minimum amount of money must, must be invested for a specific length of time. In general, the longer the time period, the higher the interest rate and the less money required if you withdraw the money in a CD before the maturity date. There is usually a penalty such as six months interest. The table gives sample rates for some of the available CDs. The interest given is simple interest. However, unless you want the interest earned each period to be paid to you, the interest earned on the CD will also earn interest. For instance, if a bank pays 5.3% simple interest on a two-year CD of $2,000, the actual interest rate is greater if the interest is left with the CD until the CD matures. Okay, So what that means is matures, you have a length of time that that money must stay in that certificate of deposit in order for it mature. And when you start earning interest on a certificate of deposit, you do have the option of having the interest being paid to you or being deposited back into the CD. When it deposits back into the CD, that changes the amount that is in the CD. So then you begin to earn interest on the interest. Okay, we kind of talked about that last time with the idea of compound interest. So again, you want to make sure to take a look at that table there showing you the interest rates that you can get based on the different time periods if you put your money in a CD. Okay. So our model problem number one, what we're going to be taking a look at is you're going to be comparing the interest rate earned on a certificate of deposit versus <coughs> a uh, the, uh, the amount of interest you can earn on a straight savings account, okay? So model problem number one, right? We're gonna compare this, these two things. You're gonna compare the interest you could earn in a certificate of deposit versus the interest you earn on just a regular savings account, right? And to do that, 
we have to use two of our formulas. We're going to be looking at using the simple interest formula and the um, compound interest formula, okay, that we, we just looked at in unit 10.9. So, in model problem one, it says, how much more will a one-year $1,000 certificate of deposit earn at 5.25% simple interest than a $1,000 savings dollar account at 3.5% interest compounded quarterly? All right. So again, what we're going to be doing here is for the interest on the certificate of deposit, it's just going to be our I equals PRT, the simple interest formula. Right, so again, our principal here is $1,000. The interest rate is going to be 0 0.0525 times 1. That gives you an a interest earned of $52.50. Okay, so on this certificate of deposit, after that one year and it goes to mature, you would have earned $52.50 in interest on that initial principal of $1,000. Now, when we're going to look at the interest that is earned on the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, using the um, compounded interest on the savings account at 3.5% compounded quarterly, we're, now we're using our compound interest formula. So again, our first step is we've got to actually figure out what our 3.5% interest rate would be quarterly. So we're going to take 0 0.035 divided by 4. That gives you, a, I believe, sorry, reading it back, 0 0.00875. Okay, so here is the quarterly interest rate. Now we simply plug in the numbers. So we've got 1,000, okay, multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.00875. That gives us 1,000 times 1.00875. Again, quarterly, so we're going to take that to the fourth power, right? That is then 1,000 multiplied by 1.0355. That gives you a new balance of $1,035.50. So we know that the amount of interest you would have earned okay, on the savings account would be $35.50. So you earn $35.50 using the savings account. We earned fifty-two dollars and fifty cents using the certificate of deposit. So to find the difference, you simply take the fifty-two fifty and subtract the thirty-five fifty, which gives you a difference of seventeen dollars. You earn seventeen more dollars by putting your money into the certificate of deposit than you would have earned just putting it in a straight savings account, right? So again, you, seventeen dollars might not seem like a lot. But as that adds up, you have that in there for multiple years, you actually can end up making quite a bit more money in interest if you put your money in a CD versus just a straight savings account, right? So again, you really need to make sure and take a look at this model problem so that you can see the difference in how it is that we actually came up with this, right? We use two different formulas. We use the simple interest formula to find out our interest on the CD. And then we used our compound interest formula after figuring out what the quarterly interest rate was in order to figure out the interest paid on the savings account. Then we simply subtract the um, greater interest rate from the lower interest rate. And then that tells us the difference between the two. Okay, So really make sure that you take a look at model problem one just to make sure, again, that we've, we've worked on these, you, you should by now be very comfortable using the simple interest formula. And then, like I said, from the, the lesson you would have just looked at and worked on, um, that the idea of the compound interest formula that should be very fresh in your mind. So hopefully it, it really is not going to be that difficult, especially if you take your time to really look through this model problem and just follow the steps. Again, if you make sure and read, all of this here, it explains to you exactly what steps you're taking and why, all right? So make sure you're really paying attention to this model problem, guys, okay? These model problems are really, really helpful if you take the time to read through them carefully, okay? So if you take the time, one, watch this video and, and listen to the instruction that I provide, then match that with taking your time to read through and really focus on these model problems, Guys, you really should be able to understand and get through 
the exercises without any issue. All right, so the second um, type of uh, savings that we're going to be looking at is a savings bond, right? A savings bond is a series EE savings bonds are issued by the United States government and are sold for 50% of their face value. When the original cost plus accumulated interest reaches the face value, the bond is said to mature and the owner is paid the face value. So a $75 bond is sold for $37.50, right? That's half of the $75 because remember they are sold for 50% of their face value, okay? And the holder receives $75 on the maturity date, which is currently around 17 years from the time of purchase. After owning a, bond, a savings bond for six months, you may redeem or cash it. Of course, you receive only what you paid for it plus any accumulated interest. There is no penalty since you receive every penny of the interest that you earned. The maturity date is just the maximum time that you have to wait for the bond to be worth its face value. Okay, so that's really important to remember, right? So as you go here, you're buying that $75 savings bond, okay? You buy it for $37.50. It's half of its face value, okay? But in order, if you want to get that full $75, you have to wait, like I said here, around 17 years simply to get the full $75. To make that $37.50 in interest takes you about 17 years, okay? So th there's that balance, right? If it, uh, A savings bond, honestly, as if it's going to be something where you, you might need to be pulling the money out um, and you want to get more return on your investment, right? A certificate of deposit would be a much better way to go because you can, with that certificate of deposit, if you deposit a high enough amount, right? It's kind of something we talked about, right? How um, we talked about, uh, you know, how people will sit there and think about, you know, if they win the lottery or different things like that. Remember, there's been several times we've just had those kinds of conversations in here. And I've always said, you know, if I had that, I would actually take my money, I would put it in a CD and simply get paid the interest, right? And so that's an option you have with a CD where if you were to put a large enough amount of money in that CD, you can just be taking the interest out and that's a decent amount of money depending upon the balance that you put in there. So you do need to weigh the options you have if you're going to be needing that money, then a savings bond is not necessarily probably the best way to go. Savings bond, like um, when I was a kid, something that li like a lot of times when I was a kid, my, my grandparents and um, some other people actually bought me some savings bonds when I was a kid and they matured by the time I got out of high school. And so I had the full face value of that savings bond when I got out of high school and I was able to use that to help pay for college. And so um, that that's something that sometimes people will do, especially for their kids or their grandkids. They'll purchase those savings bonds because the kid isn't going to be accessing that money anytime before it hits that maturity date. And so once they get to that point, which a lot of times tends to be once you get done with high school, then, then, then you can pull that money out and use it when you're getting ready to go to college or whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Um, but that's a lot of times when you see a lot of those savings bonds, they tend to be purchased by parents for their kids or, or grandparents for their grandchildren, that kind of thing. That, that There's a, a, a big chunk of the savings bond market. It, it comes from people doing that. So it's just something to keep in mind. You should be careful about when you redeem your bonds since interest is credited every six months. If you de redeem right before interest is credited, you will lose the interest for that period. Plan to redeem If you plan to redeem right after the interest is credited for that six-month period, the interest will be paid on the bond from the first day of the month in which it was purchased. For instance, if you purchase a bond on June 30th, the interest is paid from June 1st. The lowest denomination Series EE bonds that you can purchase is $50, right? So you would purchase a $50 bond for $25 and however long it takes for that bond to mature, okay? So a Series EE bonds bought before May 1st, 1995 had a guaranteed rate of interest. Bonds bought after that time are variable rate bonds. The government does not guarantee that they will mature no later than 17 years. 
I'm sorry, the government does guarantee that they will mature no later than 17 years. So you have 17 years. So like I was saying, right, there's one reason why a lot of times um, grandparents, parents, they will get these savings bond for their kids because it usually takes that 17 years to mature. Well, those 17 years, you get through school, um, you then will have this bond that is maturing right as you're leaving high school, and you can then take advantage of those funds. Okay. No state or local taxes are paid on the interest earned from series EE bonds or savings bonds. Federal income tax is not paid until the bonds are redeemed. For bonds bought in 1990 and after, federal income tax may not have to be paid on any of the interest if the bond money is used to pay for college tuition to an eligible um, educational institution. The one buying the bond must be at least 24. He may use the bond to pay for his education or the education of any of his dependents. The tuition must be paid in the year that the bonds are redeemed. If the bonds are more than the tuition, federal taxes must be paid on the interest of the excess amount. The adjusted gross income of the bondholder for his family must be within certain limits to take advantage of this tax benefit. Not only are savings bonds great for tax breaks, they are secure money since they are replaced if they are lost, stolen, or destroyed. The wise bondholder will keep current on the rules for owning and selling bonds. So again, savings bonds, just it's another way for you to actually take advantage of a, it. It's a type of a savings account, and it's something that is actually done through the federal government that allows the federal government to actually make some money outside of tax revenue based on interest earnings through those bond sales. Okay, so that's really where the money ultimately is coming from and why the federal government is interested in it because it is another way for them to make revenue outside of taxable income through and, and also provides a service to the citizenry um, that they can actually use. Like I said, that a lot of kids can use. I mean, I think... Uh, uh, the, the saving, I had, I had it was like almost a thousand dollars in uh, savings bonds that I had when I when I graduated from high school. So um, again, it is something that to consider, something just to keep in mind that you might find yourself being interested in working with one day. Now, looking at model problem number two here, this is very easy, guys. This is just looking at um, the maturity date and how to figure out the purchase price for a bond. Okay. So model problem number two says George Markham bought a, save, a Series E savings bond in June 1982. The face value of the bond is $500. So if the face value of the bond's $500, right away you know the purchase price is $250 because that's half or 50% of the $500. Another way that you can do is just take $500, multiply by 0.5, right? Convert to decimal multiply, that tells you the value, so it'd be $250, right? Which is what you see here in this first step to figure out what the price you would pay for that $500 savings bond, okay? So the, <coughs> sorry, the face value of the bond was $500. A, how much was the purchase price of the bond, which we just went through? B, give the month and year the bond matured if the maturity date was nine years later. So that's really easy, guys. He purchased it in June 1982. If it matures in nine years, just add nine years to 1982, it'll give you June of 1991, which again, they show you here. Very simple, very straightforward. And then C, how much did Mr. Markham receive for the bond? When did it mature? That's really easy. If you wait until the bond matures, you get the face value of the bond. The face value of this bond was $500. So again, savings bonds, very, very simple. The biggest thing to remember with a savings bond is that you purchase the bond for 50% of the face value. You do not get the full face value unless you allow that bond to mature. Okay, guys? So that's your lesson covering uh, unit 10.10. .10. All right. Make sure, again, just pay attention to the times you use the simple interest formula versus, versus the compound interest formula. Uh, pay attention to remembering that um, uh, a savings bond is purchased for 50% of face value and it has a maturity date and you do not get face value unless it hits that maturity date. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.